Let's go. Um, yeah, so you don't have uh, you don't have to <laughs> rush too much. Yeah, we should get it all done. Usually, I try to be an hour and a half max. So we'll try to stick to that uh, the time schedule. Okay. Yeah, sounds perfect. Okay, so you are now to level two forty on your shadower. Yes. Mm hmm. And how are you liking it? I pretty much love it. Okay. Since since they like uh, sped up the animations and stuff, it's a lot better than it used to be. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty fun. I talk specifically about the, um, the boomerang step finally being getting attack speed. Yeah, uh... yeah and like <laughs> meso explosion working properly. Yeah, yeah, now. yeah. Like that's so much better. Yeah, it was my understanding that they were kind of like the forgotten child of the three for the longest time, right? Of yeah, the of the I think thieves. So too. And then with yeah. the, those changes and with the fourth V coming in, that they are actually quite competitive now. And depending on yeah. the situation, even better in, at some things. I think so too. Mm -hmm. I don't. I still don't see many, but yeah, it's definitely on the uprise. Mm -hmm. I think they were on the uprise when it was all about Limina and clearing Limina and being OP in Limina. And then mm -hmm. when people were strong enough for their Mezzo explosion to one or two shot there, you could get some sick rates, right? Yeah. Um, and because you have well, built up like Mezzo Obtain as well, people could get some competitive, sometimes even the best in the game Mezzo rates. Um, yeah. You know, limited to how many uh, totems you have, of course. Because, you know, Kana is a little bit unfair uh, <laughs> comparison with anyone. But um, A little bit. Yeah. But with the other class, but then because of Cernium and Burning Cernium and everything coming out, everyone who was that strong could immediately move on, but then Shadowers lose a lot, of course, because there's no way Mezzo Explosion is killing immediately in, in Cernium or Burnium. I don't know if you heard about like late game, end game um, Shadowers uh, with the new changes, now with the with the passive change, right? And with the monster HP change and all that, if it mm -hmm. became maybe a little bit more realistic, but... Ooh, I still don't really know. I know that like for Limina, you already needed like 30 mil range or something mm -hmm. to, to one shot. So that's... Yeah, that was already kind of steep, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty hard. Well, you would switch to like full damage gear though, right? Because in Limina, people would do that in, in, in dropper gear eventually. Yeah. But and if you're going to Cernium, you know, you're going there for the um, you're going there for the EXP, right? You're not really going yeah, there true. for the Mezzo. Because um, you're losing the drop rates uh, from the droplets. You're using losing cards. You're losing um, a lot of the node stones because you're not killing as many monsters. And you're losing a lot of the Mezzo just in exchange for way more EXP. That's yeah, the main that's uh, the main purpose there. But I think it's cool to have that option that you can you can choose like okay am I in, am I in this for the EXP or am I in this for the everything else basically? Oh, uh, definitely. Like I'm staying in Arcana when I want to Meso farm mm -hmm. because I get a little bit worse rates than my Kana, mm -hmm. but it's still like, still some EXP. One point, yeah, one point two bill mm -hmm. Meso per per totem, and yeah, I get like a level or something. Mm -hmm. And if I don't want to mess a form, I just go full damage and go to Esfera or something. Right. To get a bit more EXP. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty nice. Wait, which map did you say? Shadow Dance Hall? Hmm? Did you uh, just... Sorry, did I... I actually just farmed like MTS 3 and 4. MTS 3, okay, yeah. For now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the because other map like, I think uh, is all relevant. My familiars but... are those. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. Because that's the other thing, right? You're now around the time where familiars will start becoming pretty significant and you want to you know you want to get familiars but you don't want to be sacrificing everything so that you can get some familiars that's usually not the right play either right are you yeah. how are you finding like that balance are you like doing it just sometimes and then once you get to 245 or once you get it, you can clear in moonbridge you'll like i'll get enough familiars then or well, <laughs> familiars is like terrible for me because i already had a few thousand spider familiars from my Kana mm -hmm. when I farmed Meso and mm -hmm. I just got utter garbage. Right. I have like I don't know 15 epics and a few uniques and all of them have terrible lines yep. so so you're, now, you're not rushing like, to make more of those you're like nah, it'll come when it right comes <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> yeah yeah some people have uh, like more patience there some people have impatience you have trauma there apparently so yeah, yeah definitely. everyone <laughs> different scenario um Okay, but you are planning on keeping on playing this character and pushing it further into the game? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And you have like, like the, the enough time to be doing that that feels like a good decision, like a realistic one? 
lately not so much because mm -hmm. I have a lot of school and work okay. but uh, I still can like manage my dailies in almost every day and then on the weekends like a few hours mm -hmm. so and when you say dailies right. what uh, what does that include uh, my dailies include uh, the symbols mm -hmm. for now then obviously capping on the event beans mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. um, Maple Tour, Ursus, and uh, Commercy for now, because I want to get backups for um, the Pendant. Yep. Okay. So yeah. And then you try to get your weekly bosses in. Yeah, yeah. I always do that on the weekend. And uh, you do the bosses up to Lotus and Damien. Yes. Including yeah. Uh, and lose it if I can find a party. Yeah. Uh, because I have to get into random parties because. My guild is all from the US, so mm. I can't get into their parties. Mm -hmm. You're a EU, <laughs> EU cuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of us. You're in, what, in Germany or? Yeah, I'm yeah. from Germany. Germany. Yeah. Yeah. That faint that faint German accent. <laughs> that faint German accent, ah. Yeah, you can 100% hide it, but it's barely there most people won't won't hear it don't worry i have that trained <laughs> european uh european ear right yeah <laughs> we, we we hear a little bit everywhere It'd be like oh this one's dutch this one's like swedish this one's german like yeah that's true yeah. for americans just like that's not really american <laughs> 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 but it's not british either i don't know what it is <laughs> um <laughs> Okay, and, and the sky's the limit on progress, or do you feel like it'll be real, you know, because of work and study, that your your ceiling is probably going to be like hard lucid and hard will, or are you just taking it one step at a time and just seeing where it goes? I'm mostly just taking it one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not focusing on going to Black Mage, but right. okay. I think like the hard will, hard lucid eventually is, is a good mm -hmm. aim. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um... Well, so one of the things is like setting up parties and all of that stuff, right? And now with with uh, Lucid, that's a good that's a good test case of like how that can go, and how mm -hmm. leaving things up, quote unquote, to chance on whether or not you're gonna get a party, brings with it a lot of I don't know if I want to say like anxiety, but it's like that not knowing how it's gonna go and and who's gonna be in the party and whether you're gonna get a party that week and stuff. It's not a comfortable uh, good feeling, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, and surprisingly, like the last four sessions or something, we've all been people in like the same situation. If you guys just all group up, okay, <laughs> <laughs> then you guys have a party. Um, there seem to be a lot of people in that area, and I think it's just because of the general progression is that people are definitely being pushed into like the late 230s and into the early 240s quite quote unquote easily now. Like that's that tends to be a place that that even the more casual players can definitely get to. Um, but Lotus, uh, but Lotus and Damien kind of, but Lucid is everything but a casual boss, right? You need preparation. You probably need voice comms. You need practice. Yeah. Uh, you need enough people. You know, you can go in with four, but you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself. You'd probably want to go in with five or six. That's what these bosses were designed for. So it would be a good idea to like start putting out your feelers and being like, okay, asking in chat every now and then, being in discords, um, you know, actively looking at your guild, um, maybe reconsidering, you know, it's not like they're bad people or something, but if you're looking for something so specifically and the guild can offer that, then maybe another guild can, you know? Yeah, true. Um, I mean, I was considering that if I like get to a stage where I can actually really do will uh, regularly, because mm -hmm. then I might change guilds or look for just a uh, fixed lucid and will party. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be outside your guild. I'm just saying it is an option. It, it, yeah, it, it would sure. be cool if you can get one or two people from your guild, and then you can find one or two people in a Discord, and then you find one fill, and you're good. The the hard part is is if one person is like the only one who's carrying the party and trying to keep the whole thing together. That's always a little. It's always a little taxing on that extra person. You want to make sure that you have members who all agree and understand that, and all do their part to at least make sure they're on time. Or if they can't make it, they give it they give you like a week's notice or something or they make sure that they find a fill themselves it what i've seen recently like at least over the past few years is that sometimes people will be like 15 minutes before the boss uh fight be like oh shit i can't make it sorry guys and then that's it and it's like what like you're leaving us hanging right 
Um, yeah. And if you're the leader and it kind of comes on you and it happens too many times, you'll be like, fuck it. I'm like, <laughs> fuck this shit. I don't need this, you know? Um, yeah, it's true. supposed to be like a fun experience and like a bunch of people with the same goals coming together with the same purpose. And that, that will take some, some growing pains, but the sooner you start that, the sooner you'll find that party. Um, Cause you'll have some people who are like, well, I'll just show up and, and do my thing, but like, I don't care about any of you guys. Or you have some people who mean very, very well, but they'll, they just don't cut it in the party. Like they're just not good enough. Either they don't do enough damage or they don't learn the mechanics or they just take forever to, you know. And you have to, you have to decide for yourself what you're okay with going into it you know um yeah. if you're going to do like a try hard party then there's going to be a lot of pressure on you and everyone and if you're going to do like a more casual party then there might be a lot of eh, you know <laughs> i don't know how historically culturally usually german people don't do very well with a lot of eh. <laughs> you know i don't know i don't know how you are in that um usually it's a little bit more like you know work hard play hard kind of attitude that i'm used to from uh People yeah, it always know. depends. I mean, so, since I don't have that much time going like uh, mm -hmm. a bit more hardcore and focused is probably better for me just because I actually mm -hmm. can get stuff done then. But I mean, learning mechanics, I don't mind that much. Mm -hmm. Like, but yeah. It well, yeah, yeah, I'm saying as a general, because when you're setting up a party, it, it's the same thing as when you're setting up a guild. It's good to have some kind of idea of what that party is going to stand for, what that guild is going to stand for, and how you're going to treat um, dissension is like a strong word, but you know, how you're going to treat like outliers yeah. and or whenever things aren't being lived up to. Um, it's good to have an idea of that beforehand so that you don't have to think in the moment like, oh, somebody didn't show up three times. Like, well, what do we do now? Do we like tell them that, do we give them like a final warning without there being a, a warning beforehand or something? You know, like something simple like that. You can be like, okay, well, what do I think is realistic? What do I think is fair? It's like, okay, we're gonna do a party guys. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna try to do two or three um, practice runs before somewhere during the week. And then on Thursday, we're gonna try to do the actual run or on Wednesday or something, um, you know, depending on the week, on the reset, on the availability. And if you can't show up, uh, make sure that you find a fill. If you can't find a fill, let me know at least X days in advance. If you, you know, don't follow these rules at least two times, then we're gonna, you know, we might we might fill you because um, we do want to get those clears in. You know, something like that. Just having some like yeah. basic rules. If you're gonna be leading a party, I'm saying, right? Um, or if you have some of those rules and you have someone else who's also looking for a party and they have almost the same rules, but you can like compromise on that. Um, it's good to start with a basis like, cause that takes away a lot of the frustration of what to do in the moment. Cause you don't want to be an asshole, but if you have the rules beforehand and people say like, okay, then you can just say like, Hey, you agree to the rules, you know, like, and then it's not your problem. It's, it's a them problem. Yeah, that's um, true. So if anything, I've learned from like being in parties leading parties to then immediately after that not leading parties anymore because of all the um because everyone is juggling a lot of stuff so nobody has like you know it's for me it's this is my full-time job but my full-time job isn't like running boss parties either right like that's not something i want to do all day every day either so yeah so no. write down some things that you think are very annoying that you want to avoid and write down some things that you expect of yourself and you think are realistic to expect of other people as well and then that's a good basis to, to start with. And then the second thing is to just, you know, get the word out there. So, I mean, my chat is always available for that if you're looking for parties. Uh, I don't know if you joined my Discord and uh, gave yourself the lucid role already. So there's roles uh, for uh, the different bosses. Yeah, no, I just joined the Discord but haven't really looked into it yet. Mm -hmm. but yeah, there's yeah. so on the top left-ish, somewhere there, there's boss roles. And then you can reply with a emoji and you get extra rooms. You get access for all the different, you know, sets of bosses. And those will basically be used to just to report like that you're recruiting or that you're looking or something like that. And the more people use it, the more easy it will be to find parties. So, you know, be active in there. And everyone who's in there has, uh, you know, has chosen to be in there and to be uh, to get pinged and stuff. So you can ping as much as you want in there because uh, if people okay, don't right. like, well, I mean, don't do it like three times per minute. But, um, you know, within reason, because um, people select to be in there because they're looking for parties. And if you're not actively looking for a party anymore, then you can just leave that room and then you know, join it later when you need a party again. So, um, yeah. yeah, so yeah, like use the tools, right? Cause like the sooner you get that going, the less pressure there will be. Yeah, it won't be something like hanging over your head. Like, oh, that's another thing that I still need to do, you know? Cause ugh, there's already enough to do in this game and you have got your work and you've got studies. So yeah, yeah. try to, 
use the tools that are out there to, to hopefully make it easier. Because, yeah, like I said, if you if you look in four different places and you can find one person in every place, then now you almost have a full party, right? And then you yeah. ask in the chat, maybe there's one person who's available on a second or third character who wants to join. Maybe they also know the mechanics. That helps a little bit, can help you with call-outs and stuff in the beginning. And then, um, you know, there's boss uh, voice rooms as well in the Discord that you can join. If you don't, ha you know, don't want to make your own Discord because it's just a practice run or something. And then once you have your own party, you probably want to make your own Discord uh, where you can make your own announcements and stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and, and if there's anything you need or anything that you think would be helpful to set up parties even better, then let me know. You know, maybe I can do it for my Discord, and maybe other people feel the same. So I'm always open to feedback for that as well. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so have you? Uh, so, have you seen sessions before? Have you seen my um, links before? My commands? Like, what is your familiarity with uh, the process and with the game? I guess. Uh, yeah, like, I haven't watched so many progression sessions because there are like how a dare lot you? Of them, no, no, they're <laughs> always two hours or something. So yeah, there's a long ones. Yeah, yeah. Usually, yeah. What, people just watch them during totems now. Apparently, so. Yeah, sometimes. Or I, I watch like the ones for uh, really high-end players mm -hmm. because I just want to see like the insane amount of damage or gains they try to get. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what is a realistic um, thing someone goes for when they... It seems you already have everything. Like, what can you possibly still do, right? <laughs> yeah, like, I'm at 17 star good potentials and I'm like, how? where where does all the damage come from now? Yeah, how could you like go like, twice as, like, twice as my, many status as that? Yeah, yeah that's... Something like that. So I had the same yeah, thing I, when I was at that point. Yeah, it's like I feel like everything is pretty much done. Like, how am I gonna double this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, I look up like all your links all the time for mm -hmm. um, the Dominator pendant, for example, or um, I don't know the the general progression guide, like what stats I should aim for at what mm -hmm, stage mm -hmm. and stuff like that, because I find it really helpful. Mm -hmm. Or flame score guides, for example. Yep. And you find all of um, it realistic as well, or did you see find anything where you're like, okay, this doesn't seem right? Nah, it's pretty much it's pretty accurate, I'd, I'd say. Okay. What? Like the flame score stuff, always <laughs> when I aim for what you uh, said is a good benchmark, mm -hmm. it felt like yeah, that's a pretty big increase from what I used to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's all yeah. about future proofing as well, right? With the with the flame score, so that once all your stats yeah. settle, that that will become like the stats that you want and not so much for right now because sometimes people get confused like well this thing says it has a lower flame score but like it gives me more damage like how does that work was well eventually it won't anymore <laughs> like that's the that's the goal so that you don't have to redo your flames every single time you change your other stats around right yeah i actually have an example of that because i have two pink bean cups mm -hmm. and one is higher flame score but gives less range and mm -hmm. i'm like okay <laughs> yeah, I'm not questioning that right now, but that's weird. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's that's the example, like the cup, because club cups is one of those things where you just you have one, and then you can get one as a drop every week that has a potential to be better, or or, or slightly worse. Sometimes one is like better when people have drop gear and meso gear uh, and, and damage gear, right? Some one skills better yeah. than the other. It's typically if you have more. Um, if you have more percent, then that skills better when you have drop rate gear, because then you have less total percent stat. And if you have one that's more flat stat, then typically it skills better in damage gear because you'll have more percent stat there. It's, that's oh, yeah, typically... Right. Because it's always it's always based on the balance of all the stats that you have in your account. And that's why certain things are really good early on in the game, like a Hayato Link skill or something, right? Early on is really good because it gives a lot of stat and a lot of, uh, a lot of attack. But mm. then, you know, the further you go, the more attack and stat you already have, you get diminishing returns there. And then percentage damage becomes way better later on. So... Depending on where you're at, certain things can be really good or not as good. Like in the beginning, right, you can imagine just flat weapon and magic attack in the beginning of the game is insanely good. Because the only thing that gives you anything is your weapon. And that's it. And that's barely upgraded and not even flamed. But then the further you go and with Star Force, you get so much weapon and magic attack from everything. That the, lo the small chunk of weapon attack is, you know, it's only a small drop in the ocean, right? But if you yeah. could do something that gives you percentage attack, then that becomes way better because there's more percentage to multiply. So that's kind of how the balance between the things changes. And that's why I, th yeah, I like the progression grid because it helps you kind of maintain a balance of the stats plus maintaining like how much does it cost you to get to those points on all of these stats. Because that's yeah. the, the important part, right? 
Okay. Yep. So, what plays the character? Okay. And yeah, you're mainly in a mobbing and durability. Are you in any kind of rush to change that, or are you fine keeping this for a while? I'm probably gonna keep this for a while, I think, because I'm still leveling mm -hmm. quite a bit. Yeah. Like I went from 230 to 240 now, and probably gonna aim to 250. And then I'm probably going to slow down and switch out the Meso Obtain and uh, try to get just bossing in our ability. Yeah, and then focus more on the Hard Lucid, Hard Will on the, on the set yeah. party, right? Maybe yeah. you go up to 255 or something, but probably like say around 250. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, cause Will himself is level, two, uh, is level 250, right? So you want to get that full damage in, but that still means that if you gain levels, you still gain damage just from the level difference as well on Will. So that's why I'm like mentioning that as an option. I mean, technically you gain final damage until level 260, right? They extended the final damage boost to up to 10 levels above target for reboot. Yeah. But uh, I mean, yeah, just casually getting to 260 is <laughs> it's quite it's quite some work. True. Okay. But then uh, I, I still might change out the Meso Obtain because I'm going to Moonbridge then. So mm -hmm. I'm probably going to use my um, bossing equipment anyways. Yeah. So then I don't need it anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, it's boss. Wait, I totally misread your inner ability. I totally read it as drop rate and meso obtain. My bad. It's boss damage and meso obtain. Yeah. Okay. So it's a little bit of a, a little bit of mix of both now. Yeah. 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 So that's yeah. That's probably fine. Yeah. Um. Okay. And you're familiar with the commands and everything. And is there any specific topic where you feel like you could use extra help on, or is most of the like systems in the game and everything pretty clear? Um, well, it's all pretty clear, but like, is it completely clear? Th That's the question, I guess. I think it's pretty clear, except maybe for the familiars, like the the, the drop familiars and stuff that I want to get. Mm -hmm. Because like, there's auto steel and stuff like that, and I'm not quite sure how exactly it works and what <sighs> I should be that. aiming for. Yeah, I'm not. I do, to be fair, I'm not 100% on auto steel either. What I remember from it is when I looked it up, is that you know, if you really are like trying to hardcore min max, then there is, then you can use it. But for like 99 plus percent of people, it's not even worth trying to get into. It's just kind of like a meme. Um, from what I understand is if you hit monsters, not your familiars, but you, uh, sorry, not your familiars, not your, um, your summons, but you physically kill minions. Some people have floated the idea that your minions had to kill, had to hit the monsters before it died. I don't, th I don't think that was. I think that was unconfirmed. That that, that is not necessary. It's more about uh, whether you hit it versus your your uh, summons hitting it. Um, that you um, basically, like with auto steal, you get a chance to get a drop from the monster that the monster would drop when it died, but you can get it when you just hit it rather than killing it. So you okay. don't create extra drops, you just create the drops a little bit earlier than otherwise. So with that in mind, it's already, it seems pretty useless. Um, but the main thing is that it can create extra when it comes to mesos. So you can get like a certain percentage of what the monster was gonna drop beforehand if you hit it and not kill it. So if you put out like a lot of particle skills, um, you know, like you know, like um, Shadow War does kind of do kind of a little bit, right? People who just mm -hmm. run around and one shot everything basically don't get anything out of it. Uh, but if you have okay. some particle stuff going around, um, or if you heavily rely on uh, summons and everything, so uh, apparently it's around half a percent of meso increase, like multiplicative meso increase per one percent uh, drop. It seems like it's pretty good, but like if you have twenty percent, then you gain ten percent. Um, it's already like kind of hard to stack. So some people will go for um, the auto steal on the familiars, and you can also get auto steal on gloves if you use Meister cubes. But then, you, of course, you have to s sacrifice uh, critical damage, right? Which is a usually a huge part of your damage. So some people will min max in that just you know to make their rates even better. Um, most people don't really bother with it though. Um, yeah. But yeah, if you're really strong, you know, and you're still in. Uh, and still in Limina, and you're like, okay, I'm just going for farming now because there's an event soon, you know, then you can go a bit harder on that if you have maybe like your old glove, your old Abzo glove or something, you like you re-roll that one for auto steal, and you can still kill properly and get some familiars out, and otherwise you're just inserting or burning certain in like full damage gear trying to get rates, basically. Okay. Those can be like your options then. 
Yeah. Sure. And was that the only familiar thing, or? Yeah, that's pretty much the only familiar th familiar thing. Yeah. Okay. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well. If anything like comes the, up, the you can still you can still ask. It's not like familiars is off topic now. Okay, you can <laughs> always revisit <laughs> if there's something. <laughs> yeah, now, I, I, like the most, the the biggest question for me is like what to upgrade in what order and like what equips I should get or replace. Like mm -hmm. for example, Meister Ring or the new uh, Slime Boss Ring, mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's where I'm not really sure on how to progress from now on. Yeah, it feels like the slime boss ring from everything I've seen and heard. Um, it almost feels more like kind of like the Papalatus Mark route about uh, with, from upgrading. Like it's cool if you get one, and then you can definitely work on it. Um, but you don't really want to count on it too early until you can do like the chaos version of the boss, which yeah. seems very strong um, and regenerates a whole lot of uh, HP. Because it, it seems that people who are liberated or like close to liberation or something are taking like around 20 minutes to solo it with like all of their buffs on, like the hard boss. So that's pretty steep on <laughs> HP yeah. and the requirement. And you have like, yeah, you have like people three manning it f for like 15 to 20 minutes as well. People who are like starting black mage runs and stuff. So, um... Like 15 minute runs for three people. So that's. Yeah, that would be like six manning if you're at like high 40s, low 50k stat or something at least to try to do it within the timer, you know? Yeah, okay, that's nothing I'm very close to right now. Yeah, yeah. So it seems more like kind of a Hail Mary if you get it from normal. If you do get it, you can work on it. But y hopefully, you. If you do get it, you. It would almost be a waste to just get it like 17 star and give it potential. You'd almost always just want to kind of hold on to it and work uh, with a transfer scenario, right? Where you go like high star force uh, kind of treasure, transfer it into a superior, then maybe then hope, then try to tap it again to 21 and then move it into the slime ring so you get at least like a 20 star slime. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I'm not even sure if it's worth to really bother with it too much because what are you going to be upgrading? Like a little bit of extra Star Force stats and like up to three percent stat. You know, there's a lot of other thing things. Excuse me, that you could be um, upgrading with way more higher efficiency, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I, I feel like the slime ring is a bit awkwardly placed because like people who can easily get one, um, the only people who I think should be like upgrading it is the people who are pretty who are very min maxi. For other people, I don't think it's very worth it because it'll be a lot of cost for not that much increase. And the people who cannot get one, those are people who would really want one so that you can, you know, maybe completely skip Meister or something like that. Yeah, okay. So it's, it's a little awkwardly placed. Um, but but yeah, if, if, but if you do get one, you can definitely go hard on it. But um, probably better to go like the super hard <laughs> route rather than... Um, the small upgrade because you know with anything that you're going to transfer hammer eventually right you don't want to typically don't want to go too hard on the potential because it's going to get overwritten yeah so it, it would fall under that category for if you were going like past 17 stars and, and like you said you have most stuff 17 stars and, and legendary already right so you're looking at yeah. either transfer hammering stuff at high stars or you're looking at brute forcing with backups um those are like your two main ways of uh, of moving forward Um, okay. How do we get on this topic? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's just about yeah, general. <laughs> general. Oh, the slime ring. The slime ring. Yeah, yeah. You were talking about oh, like yeah, the true, new, true. the new edition of the ring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can definitely start. Yeah. Um, so some people were soloing it like around your level point, but like long runs, like twenty-five minute runs or something, for the normal okay. one. So, you know, you could do it as like a limit test for yourself um, or it's kind of like when you first start doing Lotus and Damien, like you can do it, but you're not in for like <laughs> 20 plus minute runs, you know? So it's yeah. you either like you do it one time to know that you can do it and then you kind of either skip it or you find a duo <laughs> kind of thing. So it's probably going to be like that for people a lot. But I imagine that for most people who are trying to look for Lucid. You could also look for a Lucid plus Slime Party, right? And see if you can do both of them together with someone. So maybe you'll... 
maybe that'll be more a thing because Will doesn't really come up that early, right? Because he's level 250, so um, maybe um, Lucid and Slime. Maybe people, people saw like loose slime parties or some dumb shit like that, <laughs> which whatever <laughs> abbreviation they'll come up with. Um, maybe that'll be more realistic in the short term. And then you go from, once you add Will, you go from normal Lucid to hard Lucid kind of thing. And then eventually it goes into a hard Lucid, hard Will party, something like that. All right. It'd be cool if you can, you know, keep the same people, yeah, and uh, <laughs> keep leveling with them and uh, upgrading with them. Uh, but there'll be some changes, you know, if you find a party, there'll be people who leave, people who get busy, other people who get added. Um, that's pretty normal. Yeah, right. Hmm. <coughs> but yeah, so I, I'd rather focus on the Meister Ring. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, for the realism of the upgrade. And uh, Do you have a lot of materials for Meister Ring? Uh, yeah, I do have a picture somewhere below. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have quite a lot. I think I have like five or six copies of the uh, five, Primal Essence five primals, now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and quite a lot of Philosopher Stones and Twisted Times. So I yep. can make like five, six rings or something. Do you have Grand Spell Essences? Uh, yeah, yeah, I okay. do have a lot of those. Yeah, cause those can be sometimes the bottleneck as well if you... Unless people have like eight primals and they have like a hundred grand spells and it's like, oh, well, <laughs> now, now you have something else to worry about. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, I've uh, farmed quite a bit on my Kana and then I just saved oh, all Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Old Kana farmers usually have a lot of those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you have a decent amount of droplets as well. And what level is yeah. the Kana at now? Uh, my Kana is 250. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. That's why the <laughs> that's why so many droplets. It was like yeah. anyways, this is a lot of droplets for level uh, two thirty nine, two forty uh, shadower. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that makes <laughs> sense. Okay, so you're also looking at arcane in the in the near future. Yeah, like the the weapon. I'm that's why I'm farming lucid every week now. I think yep. I have six stones from her now. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, but yeah, eventually when I get all the stones, I should have enough. Uh, of the droplets, mm -hmm. like I only need 20 more or something, and then I'd uh, get the weapon, yeah. And you got the, the black bean uh, droplets already? The the black bean marks, or what? No, the in the weekly shop, there's a black bean shop, right, in the current event, where yeah. you can buy, with the black beans, you can buy extra droplets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I haven't bought out all of them, but... Uh, you will be able to, probably, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I will be able to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's not much else for us to buy there. Non-reboot has a whole lot of items, but we just have droplets yeah, and flames, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, I bought a few flames mm -hmm. for the um, Sweetwater Pendant, or the Dom Pendant then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And got quite lucky, so yeah. Oh, that's but nice. But after that, yeah. Yeah, usually I, would say, uh, usually I would say prioritize the droplets, but if you got lucky, then I guess it was, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I guess it worked out, but it's, it's kind of like when you're gambling and, and you win. It's like, that doesn't mean that it was a good idea to gamble. You know, you just <laughs> you got lucky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I spent a, a fuck ton of meso on the on the Dom Pendant and I got a bit frustrated and was like, okay, come on. Ah, maybe rage I flaming. Can finish it. Yes. <laughs> and I actually managed to do it, so that's pretty lucky, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that sends a bad uh, feedback <laughs> loop for the next time. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Have to be careful. Yeah, now. just be beware. Just you don't. You just got lucky, okay? Don't uh, don't see it yeah, as yeah. the <laughs> general rule here. <laughs> okay. So so you you got a really good flame, and then you you've already transposed it. Now you're doing commercial for backups, right? Yeah, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, okay. I'm I already got it to 17 star, and like got lucky on a cube as well. So mm -hmm. I have 30 percent luck on it. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm basically just farming farming backups at the moment. Cool. Okay. Um, and so masters is, and you're aware of all of the um, uh, sunny Sundays coming up and the DMT. Uh, yeah, I I still don't really know what to do with the DMT because like I have everything at legendary and pretty much twenty one percent or over. Mm -hmm. So I don't really need it on my main, I guess. Yeah, is there another character that is a uh, possible side character that you would want to do it on, maybe? Yeah, I thought about flaming, uh, cubing a bit on my hero to get him to be a bossing mule as well because I have a zero that's pretty strong and is a bossing mule. Mm -hmm. And, you know, either my hero or maybe the um, the Lara. But I don't know if I really want to play her that much. 
And zero has the uh, zero has the compensation weapon, so yeah, the fake arcane. Yeah, and Adele was not your your taste. Nah, not really. <laughs> I like... got to two two eleven, and then I was like, nah. <laughs> Looking very naked for a <laughs> for a character, so. Yeah, she had the burning uh, yeah. half new stuff, and then I just never played her again. So yeah, yeah. I see the Mercedes, I see the Demon Slayer, Demon Avenger. <laughs> see a lot of naked characters yeah <laughs> <laughs> remember though for um for your legion raid power your raid power is also dependent on how much star force you have so just getting some equips on them and getting some star force on it will help you as well get more legion coins quicker yeah true i should do that uh well there is there is a one plus one star force somewhere coming as well that'll be good so if you can get some equips before that time you can very easily get everything to 12 for half price so it'll save you a lot of money uh, just getting that basic star force on your characters. Oh, right, right. Yeah. So I don't know if that's in like four or five weeks or something, but um, yeah, look at the... Well, I guess we can look right now. Exclamation mark events. Uh, this is usually, yeah, for, for everyone as well. And I would advise that not for someone who has like a 3 or 4k legion, I don't think you should be wasting your money on that. You should just be leveling. <laughs> but you're already past 7k, so you, you know I mean, you're you're already on your way there, so you know what you're doing. Uh, and you got plenty of 200s. Like on a 200 yeah. plus, I think it's uh there I think it becomes pretty useful to um to improve in in that way in, in the Star Force way. I think it's uh, is it week 5. Week 4? No. Week 5 is the 5715. Oh, maybe week three? Oh, week three. Yeah, January 2nd. Oh, depending on how you feel on January 2nd. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that'll be January 1st, right? January 1st will be the recovery day. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the <laughs> hangover day. Yes, exactly. Yeah, January 2nd this should, should be fine. Yeah, that's yeah. two stars on uh, on success up to 10. So that'd be easy to... Yeah, you could, you could probably gain, like, I don't know, like 40 or 50 Star Force on those four characters each. So that should be some easy gains. Yeah, true. That's definitely doable. And I don't know if your hero is in that situation as well, where he can use some of that, or is the hero more one of the characters where you'd be thinking of like thirty percent off to get to fifteen? Yeah, thirty percent off because my hero is pretty strong. Um, he's already he was like planned as a main, mm -hmm. he used to be, but he was like one of my first characters ever. Mm -hmm. So he still has like. Zakum accessories without flames because flames didn't exist back then. Right, right, yeah. So yeah, but but he's pretty pretty stacked on gear. I should just get it to fifteen stars eventually. Yeah. So yeah. Well, there's two thirty percent offs, right? So if you don't want to waste your money before the five ten fifteen on this first thirty percent off that's coming, there's still another one on uh, February sixth. There's another thirty percent off there, so you could mm -hmm. also just you know keep your money for your main right now. Uh, and maybe you know spend on DMT on the um, on the hero if that makes sense, um, yeah. and then do the star forcing after that when you've had some time to make money back and all of the you know thirty percent off doesn't really help you anymore on the um, on the shadow war right? Yeah, true. So if you still have items on the hero that have like um, no flames or anything, when you get flames from bosses, where where are you throwing them now on the zero or? Uh, no, I'm actually. Throwing them on the hero. Oh, okay, okay. Zero's turn now, yeah. Okay. Yeah, his flames are not that good yet, so yep. I'm trying to get it up because my Shadow is pretty much done with the normal flames. I just would use black flames from now on. And like the zero is has enough damage to solo practically everything up to Lotus. I don't think I can do it, but I haven't really tried it. So mm -hmm. yeah. Might, might be one of those things again where you maybe can, but it's like super, super long. So yeah, <laughs> don't want to sit through that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As long as you have like a general priority of like, this is the character I'm working on now for flames. This is the one that gets my cubes, you know, so that you don't waste that resource. Cause sometimes you look at your inventory and you see like eight cubes blinking. You're like, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> what do I do yeah, with these? Right. But it's good to have an idea beforehand. And then when something finishes, you're like, okay, what's the next item I'm working on? Because it's kind of invisible value, but it is a lot of value that go that that passes hands through your account by uh, by doing bossing and everything. Oh, definitely. I either either throw it on the hero or on the legion mule I'm leveling right now, yep. like on Lara or the Iran was mm -hmm. the last one I mm -hmm. did. So just throwing a bit of stuff on there. Okay. But cool. yeah, sounds like a science. Just throw a bit of stuff on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll work out. Yeah. Um, and the, okay, so you see the resources, yeah, yeah, 
Okay. Uh, well, let me look at the equips and everything. Um, that is a nice shield. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I can't say much else about that. <laughs> and then everything has attack and a line of damage there. Yeah, so that's pretty much what you can get at the moment. So nothing to really work on there. Uh, that does mean more pressure on the... Um, you know, realistically, for like min-maxing, that could be um, a lack of boss damage, right? Um, yeah. But we'll, um, you know, that'll that'll correct eventually. You know, that third line on the weapon can easily be a boss damage line. Um, yeah, I didn't the, want to work on it right now because I was like, no, our for sure. Pain for weapon sure. is rather yeah, no, no, definitely obtainable now. Definitely, so. yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm not saying that you should just um. Could, yeah, for right. the balance sake, right? You de you you want at least like one boss damage line on your on your WSE, and since your secondary is locked in, your weapon is gonna be able to quote unquote settle for a boss damage line very easily. Which means that your cubing on your weapon is probably gonna be rather cheap in the grand scheme of things. You know, a yeah. lot of times people end up with two line attack and a and a line of boss on their secondary, and then you're you know, they would rather want three lines attack than two line attack and a line boss on their weapon, and then that can be very very costly. So. Well, this is this line on the secondary is mostly costly. This is, I think, it's like a sixty to seventy bill line or something. Ouch. On how much? Yeah, some people spend on that. I know Zelpek spent like a hundred and eight bill, I think, trying to get it on his secondary. So, yeah, there's some <laughs> outliers there. Yeah. I'm assuming that you spent a little bit less than that. Yeah, I did. I think the shield was like five bill mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. Okay. Then so. I got a lucky hit and I was like, okay, that's okay. done. Yeah. <laughs> Moving I on. Next piece. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, see, Ray. So, um, yes, yeah, so you feel confident about like flame scores and how all that works, right? No need to explain yeah. any of that. Um, it's more about the order of things at this point. Yeah, exactly. I don't think the that getting a higher flame right now is doing much. So I'd rather focus on, I guess, getting to 21 stars or something like that. Mm hmm. <clears throat> And then um, I have the the Absolab, which I don't know if I should like try to perfect or keep it this way and just focus other things and eventually like switch it out for Arcane. Mm -hmm. like um, yeah. So the situation with Abzo is that for for most people, as long as you keep your other other stuff and uh, st keep upgrading the other things, um, that seventeen Abzo can definitely be good enough to get into like hard loose and hard will. Um, if you're like uh, getting close to the weapon, if you can get, you know, 17 abzo that's as good as this, uh, you can get an arcane weapon, you learn the mechanics, and you, like you know your class, and you set up like a proper party, you can do hard lucid and hard will. Um, mm -hmm. Getting extra star force on CRA will, you know, theoretically will maybe not even be necessary, but it'll definitely help, like to just make the runs smoother and faster and just easier for everyone. Um, and it'll yeah. probably, like with this WSC, it seems like that's probably going to be the next step, yeah. Because um, for a lot of the other stuff, it's mainly about, you like Alstad a lot. <laughs> yeah. Alstad I is good mean, though, because I mean, you're a Shadower. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, you're Shadower, so you scale off of it quite well. Yeah, that's true. So people probably like black cube over this to see if they can get anything better. But what can help is that you um, find someone else who has like the full luck one and, and ask them to link them to you. So you can see the, the damage difference and see if it's even worth it. Yeah. Because uh, I know uh, Noah has like a 27% all stat on his, um, on his badge. And someone linked him like a 33% luck. And I think it was either like a small decrease or like a, you know, few like low thousands uh, range increase. So it's like, yeah, that's not worth any money to <laughs> to rework. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Edzy. Merry Christmas to you as well. Wait, are we that close already? Oh shit, it's the 18th already. Next week is already Christmas. Um, yeah, and you've got the fairy heart. Is that the fairy heart from this shop or previous one? Uh, no, it's from the last event. And are you gonna buy the current fairy heart for anyone? I'm not quite sure. I might buy it for the hero, mm -hmm. uh, or my Kana actually, but I don't. I don't think I need damage on my Kana, so it might just go into the hero. Yeah. Okay. And then you have the cup, and then the other cup that's sometimes better. Yeah, exactly. 
Like yeah, because one the is left attack. one with the all stat is is the one with the higher flame score, but mm -hmm. the other one is just a bit more damage right now. Yeah, yeah, and that's that typically means that your potentials are very good, and yeah. that the thing that you're missing, quote unquote, is like the flat stat and the attack, which will come from higher star force. So once the right. star force goes up and that gives you a lot more stat, then the left one is gonna overtake the the right one. Mm, okay. Um, and if you're in drop rate gear, probably the left one is already better. And if you're in damage gear, the right one is better, right? I haven't really looked at it, but I think the the right one is still better, but just with the like, yeah, very, yeah, or yeah, something. exactly, like closer, like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to tell what exactly the balance is going to be. You know, if you want to know, you just throw it into a giant calculator, right? And the, the robot in the, in the computer will tell you, like, here's the number. But yeah. um, to, like, eyeball it, that's, like, roughly where that, that difference comes from. Um, yeah, so the main thing is, um, like, a 5, 10, 15 event is going to be huge, right? Using the USD card now. Yeah, because it's 30% luck. That makes sense. Yeah. We got 30 and the flame and you know, your sweet water pen is already 17. And I guess the monocle can use a 30% off first to get the 15. If yeah. It's, you know. um, yeah, I think the main decision is going to be, um, do you first focus on just pushing out your CRA? Like get everything to 17, right? But that's only like your monocle and your what kind of treasure ring. And then that's pretty much it, right? Yeah. Um, that's not like a lot of expense. The main question is, is are you going to like push out CRA to try to go for like 18, 19, 20, 21? Or do you have enough money to just send 21 one at a time? Or are you going hardcore into the rings or something uh, with like backups and going for for Star Force damage rings? And are you introducing Meister into it when you already have, you know, this ring at 30%? So if you compare to the Meister ring is basically the exact same as the kind of treasure ring. So you can compare it to that. I think even at 17 is not going to be, um, or it's barely going to be an upgrade, right? Uh, how yeah. much how much bonus set do you get for your kind of treasure ring to go from uh, 16 to 17? Oh, I don't know that. Uh, Are you logged in right now? Yeah, I am, but I think, oh, can, wait. Can you drag it in Star Force and see the bonus stats? All right. Uh, do -do -do -do. Cause I don't know those numbers off my head. I mean, it must be close to the reinforced, right? Is it? Uh, it's nine all stat and nine attack. Nine? Yeah, nine. Okay, yeah. So it's the same as the reinforced. Yeah. So nine and nine extra. So you'll add get to sixty three, and eighteen. So you've got twenty three stat over, um, an eighteen and set over seven attack. So it's it's pretty much the equivalent, right? At seventeen yeah. for a meister. Plus, you'll have to roll a 3% luck for it to be better. So you basically want to look at this upgrade and be like, okay, well, so if I want to switch those rings out, I have to make the other ring better than this one. So at least 18 stars. But if I make it 18 stars and then commit to the, to the potential and everything, I spend quite a lot of money and it's an upgrade. But is it an upgrade that I need right now? Is it a necessary upgrade? Yeah, I guess I want to focus on the Chaos Root Abyss set then. That because seems, I do yeah. have enough backups for that mm -hmm. so i can just basically full send on it mm -hmm. i just need to farm a meso for it yeah and the other great thing is that once those are done by that time you'll have way more backups for other stuff and then those things will be like a more obvious upgrade that you're going to make just like cra is more obvious now yeah you'll be like okay i have like 600 dineros that's maybe or like 400 maybe by then you have like a thousand two hundred you're like okay well now i can go way crazier on that right or maybe by then you found like six kind of treasure rings uh, more than you have now. You could be like, okay, I'm just going to full send on a kind of treasure ring. And then if you get a 21 or, you know, however much you want to go for, and you're like, oh, I have like five more kind of treasure rings laying around. Now I can just do another one to transfer into the superior. And I don't even have to think about Meisters. Maybe you find a slime ring before then and you get lucky with the slime ring. Now you don't even have to worry about Meisters. And now you can use Meisters as a resource for another character because they're basically tradable rings right until you make them because another character can also just make them right so yeah. that's another way that you can see that resource if you don't need them on this character that's dope <laughs> just throw them onto another character and then that character can get a lot of gains from it um, yeah that's true or say you make like a good uh, uh reinforced ring or you work on the potential uh for the reinforced ring to try to get something better you know wild because it's already really good but um um <laughs> 
and maybe you roll like drop and mezzo on it you can be like oh that's bad or you know the glory guard ring can just like pop back in and be like yo i'll be your i'll be your ring again you always can have that one on the backup because you have you have good drop rate and mezzo rings already it's not like you need to replace those or anything yeah i mean i was thinking about getting a bit more drop gear mm -hmm. just because i have been trying to farm uh Golux every day but the drop rate is so bad for Golux, like, yeah, I, I, on, uh, on yeah. the the superior stuff, the drop rate doesn't work, so that's why it will always stay oh, bad. Oh, it doesn't? No. <laughs> it, oh, it, wow. it seems to work on everything up to superior, like even including reinforced. Uh, someone in non-reboot did like a test, I don't know, they ran for like a year every single day on a character with no drop rate and one with a lot of drop rate, and the amount of superiors they got was exactly the same, um, but like the amount of cracked and solid was way different. Uh, and okay. I think reinforced was a little bit different, but not s significant enough to tell if it really worked on that or not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, so you don't have to worry. That yeah. explains it because yeah. I haven't gotten a single drop in like a few weeks or something. That's yeah. Uh, on a, some things where there's so much time in between drops that usually leads us to believe that it's not affected, like the, on the pap mark, right? Like, how can someone yeah. who has like full drop rate run for like a year and a half and never get it? and someone without any drop rate get it on the first run. Like, sure, some of that is explained by luck, but that has to be a lot of luck for for that to be ever possible. You know, that's... And there's yeah. and it's not just one person that's been do, with full drop going for that long. It's multiple people. Like, it's dozens of people, maybe even. So it's like, that leads us to believe that this is just not affected by drop rate whatsoever. Um, again, yeah, okay. could be wrong, but like, the more the longer that takes, the, the less wrong that's likely to be, right? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. hmm. But yeah, superior is, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just silly. Uh, you just have to keep doing the yeah. runs and then buy the pieces for backup. So that's another one that eventually, you know, it's just very low on the priority list, right? Maybe the earrings or the belt can be a little bit higher. Um, the belt specifically, because you have a lot of uh, possible stuff that you can transfer into that, right? A lot of transfer fodder. You can do ping bean belts. You can do reinforced belts. You can even do the Sengoku belts from uh, Princess Snow if you really need to. Um, and then right. once you're at the Star Force that you want, um, the, since the belts do drop as backup, it'll probably be more likely to be the one that you're going to get to 21. Maybe to 22, you know, depending on how adventurous you are or how far into the game you are at that point. And the earrings yeah. will be harder because you're basically just looking for reinforced earrings for fodder. And then you're relegated there to just to the, the drop uh, chance and to the amount of helixes that you do. But you could... You know, you could get a bunch of superior backups and then be like, oh, well, I have like four superior backups and three reinforced. I'm just going to try on a superior first because if I get lucky, um, then I can save myself a whole lot of money. Plus, I don't have to redo my second, uh, my uh, potential. And then yeah. that's something you try. So my mom did both things. So she, on her belt, she tried it straight up on the belt and the belt just no problem. No boom, went to 21, done. Um, <laughs> when she had like two backups, but then the earring she blew up like I think like three reinforced and two superiors And she was like, okay, I'm gonna do the transfer route now And then she got a 21 reinforced on like <laughs> the first try and then transferred it into the superior and now she has a 20 star Superior with like 30% stat I think so y you just kind of find okay. What is? What is the the, the right balance between taking risk and being money uh, efficient, right? Yeah Right. And the longer you give your account time, um, the more it, the account with the drops that you get will show you what is the right move now. And just as you've identified correctly now, the right move is to work on CRA because you have just way too much, huge potential gains compared to everything else, and it's relatively risk-free. Um, mm -hmm. Just in the same way, the drops will show you what the next thing is as long as you give your account more time because it's very unlikely you'll get unlucky at everything. You'll get lucky somewhere and then that's just going to be the next thing where you push. Yeah, right. So it's probably, you know, with like everything you have, it's probably going to be either um, the Sweetwater stuff because you could start pu pushing uh, like Sweetwater Tattoo and Monocle to like 18 and to 19 as long as you have backup Denaros, right? Mm. Um, that's the one that's more realistic and more um, um, reliable, right? Because you could get a certain amount of Daenerys all the time. And uh, did you build up to the Dreadnought? No, not yet. Oh, not yet. Okay. Well, once you have that, you definitely will get <laughs> a whole lot of Daenerys. Uh, you make them really quickly. You can get like one backup a week at that at that rate. Um, oh wow. Okay. Yeah, I think you make like forty-eight a day from just solo voyages or something. Um, 
and one backup is like 250 right yeah so you can if you do yeah. uh cpq as well you can get a backup every five days the pendant is more expensive though so that's why you definitely need a lot of it because <laughs> you're getting backup for three pieces there yeah. um and then the other one could be like kind of treasure rings if you find a lot more of that and, and you know ideally if you do end up you know the cra you get super lucky somehow you only spend half of your money and you're you manage to somehow squeeze out a bunch of 21s um, the Kana Treasure Ring is a possibility right now, right? Because you do have, what, three backups? Four backups? Let's uh, go across three backups yeah. right now. Yeah. That's, three is a lot of backups. I mean, if you know about the calculators, right? Where you can check um, yeah, average right, booms. Right. And, yeah, that. Like, three booms is, would already be pretty, uh, like during a 5 10, 15, three booms would already be pretty unlucky to get to 21. Um, yeah. And, you know, I keep saying 21. That's like just, that's my goal usually. Uh, I think it's... Um, mathematically, I think it makes sense to go for 21. It's realistically doable. Um, and if all your stuff is 21, you can pretty much do all the content in the game. Um, as long as your party is like similarly funded, then you have no problems. Um, sometimes people go for 22 because they're brute forcing, or they go because they're more min-maxi, and they know everyone else in their party is also going 21 and 22, so it makes more sense that everyone is kind of, you know, trying to squeeze out the potential of their class. It feels more fair to everyone that nobody's really kind of slacking on that. Um, yeah. But, I mean, you have one superior uh, belt and earring already back up. So if you have one backup, that's always kind of like the one that you keep in case you're trying to get to 21, right? Transfer hammer 21 into 20 and then tap back up to 21 in case something goes wrong. You want to keep like yeah. one extra. Because, um, you know, people will say 21 is free and a lot of times it is, but sometimes it's not. And then <laughs> for those times... Uh, there's not mas there's no master card. There's only <laughs> there's only backups for for those. So um, yeah, and the other thing is dominators. You can never have too many dominator backups, right? You want them as fodder for your superior pendant, and then later you want them. This the dominators become very similar to the reinfor uh, the to the kana treasure rings, because you want to like transfer them into the superior and then tap them again and then transfer them into either the slime ring or into the um, source of suffering basically because of the 160 equivalent. So. That's not for any time soon, but for eventually. So there's not a resource that you can ever have too many of, basically. Right, right, right. Um, what's like the the a goal for for meso in terms of how much approximately do I need for one item? Um. So are you talking specifically for like CRA in the short term? Yeah, right. For CRA, like mm -hmm. because you say said if I have enough money, I can try to full send to twenty one, mm -hmm. or I like do the the cycle thing, right, where I get yeah. everyone to eighteen, then to nineteen, and then to twenty or something. Yeah, um, I I like just going one star at a time because then, regardless of how much money I have, I can I, I know I'm spending my money efficiently. Plus, I know that if one item does end up getting unlucky. Um, yeah, the more money you have, the less likely it is that you'll end up spending all of your money and making absolutely no gains. Like, it, realistically, that's always, uh, or not realistically, but like theoretically, it's always uh, a possibility that you spend up, spend all your money and get nothing, right? So how do you minimize that chance and maximize the chance of getting something? The way you maximize it is by taking always the lowest risk upgrade, which is always, in the beginning, it's taking the 17 to 18. And then, of course, taking the 18 to 19 is a higher risk than taking 17 to 18 on the second item, right? So you always take right. the lowest risk improvement. And then if you end up getting stuck on like 19 on one, on, on one piece and you, and you end up going back down to 17 or like down to 12 and then ending up back at 17, then at least the other two pieces are also, are, uh, are also 19, right? So at least you gain four stars in that event. You want to avoid right. like trying to ram <laughs> to 21 on one and then if that one doesn't work and it booms 12 times or something because you know it ha happens to people and then the other two are also still 17 and you spent all your money and you got absolutely nothing that's the worst feeling so you want to avoid yeah, that right. yeah um so it seems during 5 10 15 17 i'm going to put star catching off uh for 21. it seems median cost is 8.3 bill average cost 11.4 so you know i would usually count something like a nine nine and a half um just to be a little bit on the safer side right um yeah. but yeah i see some lucky guy got it in 400 some unlucky guy got in a 68 bill but yeah that's why the average is always so high right because one person can just get infinitely unlucky and then the average is like <laughs> way out there because some dude here boom 21 yeah. times yeah that's but you see medium booms two average booms like closer to three um, you know, 
It's oh right, right, yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying like with the kind of treasuring already, that's that's almost that doesn't seem too far. It, it's just a money problem at that point, yeah. Unless you're yeah, getting right. pretty unlucky, but um. Yeah, you, you could also just try to get them all to 19 first, right? Like 18 or 19. 19 is pretty free. Like if you have backups and you have money, 19 is pretty free. And then from 19, you can be like, okay, now I have like, mm, I don't know. I have like eight bill left or something. Do I want to risk it now? Or do I want to go for a guaranteed upgrade on some other pieces? Maybe bump everything up to 18 uh, on, so, on some other pieces. Because this is like three and a half. Yeah, you see the average here is almost double the median. So it's like, it's kind of hard to gauge how much this is going to cost. Um... From from nineteen yeah. to twenty one, yeah. Because if you boom a lot, then you're just yeah, you're just infinitely spending. See, like the unluckiest guy now spent eight bill more than the last guy, even though we're starting two stars higher. So you know, and that's within a number of trials of a thousand, right? Yeah. Um, right. But the median like halved, but the average barely <laughs> barely went down, and down by like thirty percent. Yeah. Yeah. So. So. Yeah, it's I, a little fickle still. So. Yeah. Right. Right. So I guess the goal is CRA and mm -hmm. probably my secondary, the shield, I guess. Yeah, you're right. I kind of uh, overlooked that one, but I assume you have a bunch of recipes and materials to make backups, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have enough to make like 20 backups or something, so... <laughs> yeah, there's no other um, secondary in sight that could uh, replace it, plus this one caps at 20, uh, and it's three line yeah. attacks, so that's definitely the one you want to get. What you, what you kind of... Um, not to, not to say that you got, you're gonna have this, but what what people sometimes have is like, okay, this weapon is done when it comes to attack, so now I want to have it done when it comes to Star Force as well, so it can be completely done. And then people try yeah. to go a little bit overboard too quickly. Um, whereas the way I look at it is like, well, the attack and the potential is already so good that means that the Star Force doesn't even have to be that high for the whole item to be good. That's how I look at it. Um, I would definitely still work on it as like the next thing after the CRA, right? Like you said, because it's easy to get backups of, and it's also, it's capped at 20, so you don't even have yeah. to get to 21. Um, but rather than seeing it as an item that's missing three stars, I would definitely see it as an item that already has potential that compensates in the current stage of the game for, to being stronger than other people's 20 star items is how I would like look at it. Right. From an optics point. Uh, okay. But yeah, they'll probably be next. Yeah, and then, man, I, I would probably after that, I would probably just save for your arcane so you can go hard on that. Honestly, for, for the weapon, then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're you're still short on the lucid droplets, right? But when you get it, you want to get a really good flame on it. That's going to be pricey. Um, yeah. You want to get good potential on it. Star forcing it is not going to be cheap either. Uh, even with safeguarding and everything, people have dropped like four or five bill. Um, some people think unlucky people drop like 8 bill or something just for the Star Force up to 17. Ow. It is an ow, okay. and you've got your share of good luck, so you want to prepare for some bad luck too. <laughs> like yeah, you've got your right. you've got your secondary, you've got your flames, right? Um, so you always want to brace for impact because eventually that stuff comes around, you know? Um, yeah. You could be that one guy who blows up 40 pants before he sees 21, you know? That, that could be you, so... Always have that in the back of your head, not like, oh, you know, doom and gloom, but like, what do you do if it looks like that situation is happening and how can you prevent that situation from happening from ruining you, basically? Yeah, right. Well, the attack increased numbers. Yeah, I assume that he unequipped everything and then just looked at it in the inventory. Um, or you were in your uh, drop gear, maybe? No, I was pretty much just uh, unequipping the one item. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Screenshotting it. Yeah, that's how you get the biggest possible number, right? Because sometimes people unequip yeah. everything, but then the numbers are way lower because you have nothing on, so... Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> if right. you don't have a weapon on, everything is like a zero. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, so you must have had at least a weapon on, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you'll start... Yeah, so... For comparison's sake, like for my arc, for example, if I take off one piece, like one of the stronger pieces, and then look at the number, um, it'll be like around 6 mil or something. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, because everything just compounds, right? Everything just stacks on top of each other. All the stat, all the attack, all the Star Force, all of the flames, everything just empowers each other so much that the individual mm -hmm. numbers, when I have everything unequipped, it'll be around, around these numbers, maybe a little bit lower. Uh, but then when you have the other things on, because of all the compound, yeah, like the strongest pieces, the arcane pieces are adding like five and a half, six mil 
or something by themselves. Yeah, it's just it's all the it's all the pieces working together. And um, yeah. well, not to say that you have to work on Legion, but there's still some growth to be made there as well. But you know that'll come eventually. Um, that's no rush right now. I mean, you've seen the progression grid, right? Like the the Legion is already quite bigger than <laughs> at least the advised numbers. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that. That's the good thing about not being able to find a main in the early stages. So you just like play every class mm -hmm. to two hundred or something. Realize you don't like it, drop it, and try the next class. Mm -hmm. That's just pretty good to building Legion and Links. Definitely, yeah. So the other thing you were considering was getting full full drop rate set because there are still pieces where it's useful, right? You can get more dominators, more kind of treasure rings, more souls, all of that stuff. Um, yeah right or like uh, getting it to 15 or 17 stars I don't know how how realistic that is or how much it need it's needed just mm. to have like enough damage to actually one shot even the uh, higher level areas yeah so those numbers are a bit different now like when I went into them we didn't have the 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 current reboot passive and we didn't have the HP cut right on the on the monsters which were both mm. significant um, what I ended up doing was I would take my old gear that I upgraded for other stuff for damage that were kind of like retired gear because of, you know, sub bonus changing and everything. And then I rolled those for mesoptine and stat combined. And then I wore just three pieces that had five lines of mesoptine and some stat together as my only pieces that weren't full damage gear and then everything else was damage gear. And then I relied for my drop rate on my inner ability, my familiar and my holy symbol basically. Um, and my oh, wealth right. acquisition potion to make sure I got a hundred percent chance for a bag and then max mezzo obtained from the equips But mo just basically like focusing on damage damage to be able to kill yeah. um, I would assume That you would need to do at least the same if you want your mezzo explosion to have any chance of killing But even then I wouldn't be surprised if your mezzo explosion is like foreshotting or something when you if you just go into the area not a damage wise but also like sacred power wise in the beginning right you need to build up that sacred power otherwise it just doesn't make any sense um yeah. but for that i would specifically i guess ask shadowers like currently in, in limina like how weak quote unquote can you be to um to still one shot or yeah one shot with meso explosion right because that 30 mil that you mentioned is that recent or was that from before uh i think that was from before so now it might be a little bit less mm-hmm I yeah, you say a little bit, but I think the final damage change made people like 20 to 30% stronger in a lot of cases. Plus the HP cut was about 20% from the monsters as well. So it could be significantly less. I don't know if it's like from 30 to 28 mil or if it's down to like 22 mil or something. It could be a pretty big chunk. So Yeah, true. And we have the new hyperstat, the damage against normal monsters. Does mm -hmm. that work on them? Yeah, the, yeah, that that one as well. Yeah, okay. yeah. so it all yeah. it all works together. Oh yeah, TRK says yeah, sure. convey my match, please. He's our resident uh, Xenon main. So, <laughs> <laughs> fuck your luck. Start rolling more three line luck instead of taking my lines. <laughs> he's got a knife out in the chat, so be careful. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's got a lot of uh, he's got a lot of all stat running around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's something that specifically other shadowers can. Uh, can have a better gauge on because you know that news trickles down to me always like a lot later so that knowledge spreads typically pretty well are you in the in the class discord by chance uh yes i am okay yeah yeah if for other ones if you're ever looking for you can always like in my discord i also have class discords and then you have a list of all of the class discords in there as well if you want to join another one you know if you want to get some hero tips or anything um uh, if you're trying to play hero a little bit more for bossing you can always um find them there as well because yeah, yeah, there's a lot of, well, some some are good people <laughs> and some could do the Trump thing. <laughs> some of them, I believe, are good people, okay, who uh, who have good intentions, who are trying to help other people with the class. So, um, yeah, I mean, take take advantage of that. Yeah, I guess for so for tearing up, it would be either like stuff on your hero or maybe for the extra drop rate stuff that you were thinking about getting. So it is. You're not gonna go. You're not gonna be able to go into like Cernium or Burning Cernium and just like casually wear your drop and your mezzo gear. That's like, I think the only people that were able to do that were like Hayatos because they literally just have like full screen AOEs that do like insane amounts of damage all the time. I think mm -hmm. every other class had to do like some combination of damage gear or or full damage gear to be able to realistically kill there. 
Um, even sometimes after they had enough sacred power to hit like the, the threshold. So, so star forcing this might not just make any difference, honestly. But if it does, right, if you ask the Shatterers, like how much stat do I need to be able to kill properly in, in Limina, and am I set up for that? Then it, and, and, and you can make that by getting just a little bit extra star force on what's now your drop in Mezzo gear that you would be wearing in Limina. Um, then it would be worth star forcing it. So then, you know, 30% off, go to 15, and then bump it up to 17 during the 5, 10, 15. Yeah, right. Hmm. All right. Yeah, and I imagine, I imagine on the pieces that can, you probably want to, because you have some weaker pieces, right? You have the boss accessory stuff. Um, yeah. That cannot get that star force at all. So I, I think it's probably going to be good to compensate for that. Um, but you know maybe the star force on the on the CRA plus the plus the shield and the, like the the raw percentage attack that you have in your WSE might be enough. Uh, but again, that should be reflected in your um, in in your in your range in your stat window. Uh, but yeah, definitely look into the the damage to normal monsters plus the um, yeah maybe. maybe you, Take a little bit of that above bonus EXP, right? Not go... Sometimes people go like 15 bonus EXP and then look at the other ones, but maybe go a little bit harder on uh, damage to normal monsters. Because you have your um, yeah, your hyper stats here. Look five, six, crit damage, damage. Yeah, I would... Hmm. I would move the points from um, from attack power more to some of the other stuff okay the tech power and luck is more like if you have some points left over you just drop them in there to get some gains out of them unless everything else is already like 12 and 13 you don't want to go into like 14 and 15 there that's like crazy inefficient then you probably mm -hmm. want to get your attack and stuff also up to like 10. um but if you have 10 in attack and six in luck it's probably going to be better to get like critical damage, damage, and a uh, normal monster to like 11, and maybe get the bonus experience up to like 10 or 11 as well. Um, um, and then look at uh, putting the rest of the points into into luck and, and attack. Because yeah. you also have 25 points left, so I think you can get some 11s in there and probably get the bonus XP up a little bit as well. Yeah. So that, uh, does that also count for the bossing one? Because I have five luck and eight in attack there as well. Yeah, there. But I'd rather five focus and that eight on. is is um because it's def it's specifically the eight to ten like that's a big jump because eight to ten on one stat is ten to eleven on another one, and if you're gaining okay. like six attack versus gaining four percent boss damage, you always want that boss damage, especially now with the reboot passive chain. So I think five is fine and up to eight is like a little less fine, but you're not going to get like an extra level on a 10 to 11 on the points from 5 to 8 or something. That's not going to be enough. Maybe if you take the 5 and the 8 all of it away, you'll get like 111 out of it. But that's, um, I don't know if you, that's worth the reset. That's like, that's probably too close to really be too annoying. But like for okay. the next one, I wouldn't add any points. I would just wait until you have, how much is it? Like 50 points, I think. And then put like something next to 11. Don't put like, you know, the next 25 into something or into luck until the luck also gets to 8 or to 9 or to 10. Because then you have to reset the whole thing. So I think from now yeah. you just start saving up until you can do the next 10 to 11 first. Okay. Uh, symbols are coming along nicely. Yeah, I mean, that just takes time, right? Are you doing the new dailies, Morass and Asphera? Uh, no, I haven't had time to play this week yet. Oh, yeah, okay. But uh, I'm, I'm going to start doing it once I have enough time again. Mm hmm. Yeah. The, yeah, the Morass one is pretty fast. Um, you just dash through the map, kill things. The more summons you have, the easier that one is. Um, you just shoot laser at a robot and you're done. Um, the Asphera one takes a little bit of time. It took some getting used to, but I think it's still pretty fast. The slowest thing about it is like, if you're trying to do Urda Spectrum when you're like level 206 or something, right? You just, you have to do it three full times. Because um, yeah. you can't skip until Moonbridge, so that's the biggest downside about it. But you know, it's extra symbols in the area that levels the slowest, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. always a nice, uh, that's always a nice thing to have. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay, um, I'm looking at your matrix. Do shadowers not usually get four boost nodes? Um, I. I do have two other boost nodes, the ones uh, I should have included them. Mm -hmm. 
Um, dum -dum -dum. I do have Boomerang Stab, Shadow Veil, and Sudden Raid on another try node. I have them maxed out too. Uh, but, yeah, because Savage Blow you don't use anymore. Because yeah. Boomerang Stab is good now. Mm -hmm. um, so I do have that second try node also uh, two times on 25. So it's maxed out as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't really use it because uh, once your Meso Explosion starts one-shotting, you farm with Assassinate and not Boomerang Stab. Because it's, it generates more coins. So I didn't really need the Boomerang Stab boost mm. for farming in Arcana. Right, yeah, and then I think I think I did see people using it in Limina though. Yeah, if you Two are step, like right? closer to two shotting with Meso Explosion, then mm -hmm. you use Boomerang Step just right. to get them low enough. So, what would you say as an extra mention here that you, if you don't need, um, if you don't use um, B Step or um, you? If you only use um, one skill, that you can do, what's uh, what's the the AOE thing? The, the Meso Explosion or the Boomerang Step is the AOE mobbing skill. Yeah, the one Sun Raid, right? You have Sun Raid uh, in yeah, there instead. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Sun Raid is not in the list right now. Right. Out of B Step, Savage Blow, you can fill. But that's basically just to have something on there that does anything, right? It's not super Yeah, because super Sudden important. Raid has such a high damage scaling, I think it one-shots anyways. Yeah. If you farm in those areas, so... I think sometimes in bosses, people throw it out right before the boss disappears or something, because it's a little bit longer animation, so you can make sure that it commits a bit more damage on... Like, if Vellum is going to go underground, they pop it, like, yeah. right at the end. Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, right, right. So it's a little min-maxi, but it definitely can help. Um, okay... Yeah, just to make sure you don't, that you're not like completely forgetting <laughs> the other skills. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, I should have walker. So you're, what skill are you leveling now? The, um, God, Sonic, Sonic Blow? Is that the name? Yeah, Sonic Blow. Uh, I did level it, but like at 22, it feels too costly to upgrade directly. Yeah. So I'm, sure. I'm basically focusing on uh, my holy symbol right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, just for like farming drop gear and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that's, get that up. It's also not in the picture, yeah. but I assume that you have one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right, right, yeah. right. And then maybe the bind, I guess, because the cooldown on the bind is kind of yeah, it's kind of stupid, right? Yeah, that's terrible to have only one bind. That's like five minutes cooldown. Yeah. That's oh. Especially because Sonic Blow is very risky to use without a bind. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because I was doing Standing, um, like two seconds in yeah. place is <laughs> that's not good in most uh, in most boss fights. I was trying to do um, I don't know if you if you were around back then. I was trying to I did like a coaching with um, with Daboki, trying to get him to on his shadower, trying to get him to be able to kill Seavel. Yeah. And the main thing that we came down to was just get take Sonic Blow out of there and put another boost node in there and just commit your more and more assassinate <laughs> damage and just tr n not try to rely on Sonic Blow because it's just too risky. Yeah. Just be like, I mean, oh, I want to do it, I want to do it, it's so many lines, and then fucking tail dead, like, <laughs> every yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you, you mostly try, if you don't have a bind up, you try to combine it with the trick blade mm -hmm. invis thingy, because yeah. you have, like, one second. One but second, yeah. <laughs> that's still very risky yeah. at times. Th that's the more important thing, I think, is trying to really get trick blade down and getting that damage down, because that's such a short cooldown. If you can reliably trick blade, that's a lot of damage over time. Yeah. And that's safer to rely on. Um, especially with better ping and, and just like start stepping your assassinate and kind of like jumping around. Um, but this was before the fourth V, I think. So that was also ah. a bit trickier because the fourth V now, you know, if he's going up for fireballs, you press that one, you commit so much damage. Yeah. Um, so he didn't have that, but so he was, kinda, yeah, he, it was kind of tough, but you had to just let go of Sonic Blow until you're much stronger and then you can rely on it much better. Or once you get better at the boss, right, then you'll you'll notice ahead of time you see like, oh you see three of the tails during the fires that, like stacking together then you know you can just jump to the right and use it and you'll be safe and you can commit a lot of the damage yeah exactly so like it'll for, come with more insight yeah like it's perfect for lotus because mm. shadow is like dark side right so mm -hmm, phase mm -hmm. two and three is so easy 
but phase one is a bit annoying, so you just pop in Sonic Blow because you usually can get it off before the laser touches you. Yep. So that's just insane damage, and you can. <laughs> that sounds really risky. Skip usually that. before the laser touches yeah. you. <laughs> well, you sometimes have to look where it spawns. And yeah, yeah, move yeah. A bit, but yeah. Well, it takes a while to spawn, so imagine if you load in, you immediately press it, you're always good, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. You buff up before it, and then you just yeah. make the screen go. Brrr. Yeah, you want to build those stacks, right? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you go outside, you build the stacks on the robots, then run in quickly, Sonic Blue. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, it's always, yeah, Cynthia on a Shadow is always, I have to pre-stack. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a bit annoying at times, but yeah. 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 And the final damage from Last Resort and from Shadow Walker are uh, very strong additions, right, to yeah. your burst. Yeah, I see some crazy numbers out of uh, bursts for, like, higher level Shadow where you're like, oh, damn, I didn't expect them to be able to do these numbers. So they were really, you know, over time really were forgotten and i mean they're still overshadowed by by night lord of course in terms of burst but i mean who isn't yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know like two classes who can get remotely close and everyone else is just like lagging behind but then the off burst of course uh makes up for it i think shadow's off yeah. burst is pretty good also right yeah it's pretty nice if you can keep your trick I blade uh realistically and the fourth the fourth v has a very short cooldown i think it's like 90 seconds yeah, or, or 60? Yeah, 90, yeah. 90, yeah. That, yeah and it's, it's a it's good it's chunk of damage, easy. so... Yeah. It, it's difficult to confirm, though, against a teleporting boss. You can just jump out of it and... Yeah. Like, will is That's not targetable the half the time, or... He, like, teleports, or, yeah. Yeah. Um... Okay, uh, oh, you, okay, you did mention something about drop rate with familiars. You're, you're, uh, have you looked into how everything stacks? With drop and mezzo and item drop rate, mezzo drop rate, all that? Not not really. Because you do have like, two spiders. Uh, do you use them at the same time yeah. or do you just use one? Yeah, I, I do use them at the same time and I realize that it does not stack. Yeah. But I legit do not have any other familiar that mm -hmm. has anything useful. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so it would be either auto steal, right, that you mentioned before, um, or... A, a, item acquisition which can exist in unique lines or it would yeah. be something like um something like um or familiars that you want to rank up right that you have in there when you're training so that you can just level them up yeah that's typically uh yeah because yeah the second one uh, only if they have a lot of defense right to help you that's another that that would be another option like very high defense familiar to put in there mm -hmm. like your maybe your uniques if they're leveled up they tend to get a lot of defense so that will help you keep your uh, summon gauge up longer right so that can help uh, out yeah. maybe even more than than putting an extra spider in there uh yeah so th there's different um icons that can show up on the top right right if if a familiar buff is shown by the icon on the top right then it doesn't stack with other f the same buffs basically if it doesn't okay. show up there then it can't stack so like 15 percent ied or boss damage or everything doesn't show up as a buff icon that's why it can't stack now ied and boss damage specifically stack only up to 120 percent together but that's more of a non-reboot thing in reboot we don't really have to worry about that too much because it's not very likely that you're going over 120 percent on those yeah um but it's mostly for drop and mezzo so sometimes you can have two icons on there like let's say that you have increased item mezzo drop rate by a large amount uh item and mezzo drop rate by a large amount that means it's 60 percent of both uh, of each right so yeah. if you have one that gives you a large amount but just one of the two then that's that counts as a hundred percent so if you would have that one of those whether it's item or drop and then one of these like the spider active you will see two buffs and that's because whatever line that other familiar has that one is active over the equivalent item or mezzo drop line whichever the other one has of the spider so the 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 one that the other one doesn't have from the spider that one is still active from the spider so then you'll see two buffs but if you summon oh, okay. two spiders, you should only see one buff on the top right, because they're trying to do the exact same buffing. Okay, okay. So it's good right. to be familiar with what those percentages are. So exclamation mark drop rate has that um, has that worked out, where you can see what are all the lines of the familiars. So you can also see if you see a line on a familiar, like, is this an upgrade or not? Do I need to worry about this or not? So it goes from 10 to right. 30, there's some 50s, some 40s, some 60s, some 20s, some 100s, right? So <laughs> they're all over the yeah. place. So it's good to know what those numbers are and how it stacks with everything. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, and you were talking about getting more drop rate gear. So for, from your equips, it stacks up to 200%. So it's up to 10 lines of, of 20% from equips. 
Okay, yeah, well, I was mainly thinking about getting more drop equip for, like, Golox mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, if it's but mainly if it's for Golox, then, then, yeah, you can skip that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, drop rate does affect, like, uh, Kano's Treasure, for example, right? Yeah, Kano's Treasures, and, Dominators, and, yeah. Primals, um, okay. Soul Shards, and then Cubes and Flames as well, right? Which will help you trickle down into other characters and fund other characters. So yeah, I think right. eventually, I think it does pay off. Uh, just not as direct you won't see it as directly with some yeah you know if you can get more pep marks and more superior drops from it then yeah it'll it would be 160 percent <laughs> worth it yeah um now it's more indirect i guess yeah okay hmm. okay um i think we're we went over almost everything is there anything that you feel we haven't paid enough attention to you would like to address or any piece of equipment where you still have some questions on like what is the next path for this particular piece i guess i don't think so actually like perhaps the the abso equip right mm -hmm. when you say that i can keep them like that i guess i can also keep the equips like for example the boots are just 17 percent all set mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. is that good enough or should i at least cube it to like 21% or something. So I would always let that depend on what you're doing and if you have trouble with what you're doing. So if you're moving into from like normal to hard lucid, for example, um, and it's like, okay, we have a cool party and I want to do it with this party, but we're still mm, like we could do it, but it's very, very close and everyone has mm -hmm. to work a little bit on stuff to just all get a little bit stronger, then this is probably one of the first things that you will try to improve on because it's not an okay. expensive upgrade to make. But if you're yeah. good and everyone can do everything and it's fine and it's all about just you know getting better at the mechanics and the runs will get easier and you're, you know, you're in a good position, then don't spend the money. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. that's how I would look at it. Like it, it should be should be enough but if it's not then it's probably the first thing on a chopping block same with, same thing with like the shoulder maybe you go for 23 or you try to hit like a lucky higher percentage right like that's something you could do and some of the flames could be like a little bit better like a, the flame on the shoe also could be a little bit better but the yeah. question is, is like is one flame on one equip that should never be the difference between a boss being killed by a six-man party or not right so right if as a category you guys are falling short then everyone needs to look at their equips again and be like okay where can i Get a little bit of gains in the short term uh, to make it better for everyone. And then, yes, then the Abzo would maybe need a little bit of tweaking here and there. Okay. And also the, the emblem, like the potential on that, should I wait a long time until I replace it? Or is damage actually bad enough that I should try to get it like three line or at least... I don't know. You can't get boss damage on emblems, right? No, just ID. Um, so damage... Yeah. Damage is basically the next best thing uh, next to getting attack. Um, okay. And because damage is more valuable now comparatively than before because the reboot passive change, I don't even think it's that bad. I, I, when it comes to like getting 3-line on WSE, usually I don't really advise people to do that until you're like actively getting a bunch of stuff into 20 and 21 star. And everything okay. else is already like 2.5 lines. Like everything is 27 out of 30 or, tw or 30 out of 33%. Excuse me, 30 yeah. out of 33% on potentials. Then I think min maxing and trying to three line WSE comes um, in order. So I wouldn't touch that for quite a while. Those are expensive. Mm -hmm. And again, for this, you can also use the calculator, right? To kind of see how much is that going to cost, um, what I'm yeah. aiming for. And you will see it's, I think on discount red cubes, the average for getting three line attack is 30 bill. Okay. Yeah, that's a bit much. Yeah. And I, so I got, <laughs> I had 30 bill and I had uh, cube discounts. I was like, fuck it. <laughs> I hit the numbers. Let's go. Um, <laughs> and I got it in my last, uh, my last chunk of like six cubes. I, I, I hit it and I spent literally like the whole 30 bill. And I was like, okay, I'm not getting it. You know, like I had given up. I had gotten three line magic attack twice already. I was like, it's just, it's not in the cards. And then I think like the third or fourth, the last cube or something, like three or four cubes left. I got it. And I was like, wow. <laughs> okay, well, I guess the the, the calculator was correct. <laughs> yeah, that's when it pulls you back. Yeah. It's like you thought. Yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, yeah. yeah, so, you know, I, I got average luck there. So, uh, and it happened. And then you're done. You know, that feels really good to be done with that. But, um, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't try to go for that upgrade too quickly. This is fine. 
Twenty one second okay. percent damage is, is fine for quite a while. Plus you have the again you have the secondary. Usually I just see the potential of the weapon secondary and emblem as like one big clump. You know, like how much yep. do I, does that have in total? What is probably missing now is like a line of boss, and the emblem can do that. The weapon will have to do that, and arcane is you know that's already in progress and that's pretty close. So I would definitely see the emblem as a way way later thing. Star force on the okay. weapon. Uh, sorry, star force on the uh, on the shield, and then the new weapon, good flame potential on the on the new weapon and then all the other stuff and then emblem is like somewhere down the road yeah all right yeah that's that's basically it okay cool well that's exactly one hour and a half as well so we nice. we made it right on time so everyone who's uh doing their totem has like another half hour to go last coupon guys make sure we refresh 30 minute coupons <laughs> um but yeah best of luck um i'll upload to youtube if anything still comes up based on you know the session you can just dm me in discord and if it's just a small thing you know you can check the um the commands or you know ask in chat and we'll always have someone willing and able or myself to to help you out all right perfect thanks man yeah no problem best luck and uh, i'll see you around yeah see you okay uh, nice holidays right yes yeah happy happy holidays um, <laughs> Merry Christmas. yeah wait how, oh man how do you say that again in german hang on it's like uh uh oh uh, is it weihnachten yeah Fro it Fro Fro weihnachten or something yeah Fro weihnachten. oh god oh yes i got it <laughs> oh man that was deep in my brain somewhere <laughs> <laughs> oh god because it, it doesn't sound like christmas at all <laughs> so it's yeah like... <laughs> it's not even close no <laughs> no yeah okay well i did it yeah well uh Fro weihnachten uh to uh for, for dich uh <laughs> Und äh, viel Spaß thanks. mit das äh, Leveln. Oh, thanks. I, uh, I hope so. Und viel, viel Erfolg mit die Drops. Right. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you around and uh, have a good one. Alright. All right. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Alright, taking out the German boys. <laughs> oh god, I haven't spoken German in so long. Oh! Dude, you, you, you guys don't understand how deep I had to dig into my brain to find Weihnachten. Oh, man. I learned that in my fifth year of high school. We have six years of high school here, by the way. We start right when we're 11. Um, so I must have been 15 when I learned that. So that's 18 years ago. <laughs> oh, that's like longer ago than some of you are old, okay? My brain. I made it. I got it. Oh, so proud of my brain. Still working up there. Good job, kiddo. Okay, um, or oldo, whatever. So yeah, um, we didn't really go deep into the commands and everything, into the systems, into the um, the resources. But if you do need those as backup to give uh, context to all of this information, make sure you check out the Twitch chat. Make sure you check out the commands in there. You'll have a trove of information, a treasure trove. Um, on how you can get to a legion this big, how you can make sure that you spend your money in the right place at the right time. Uh, but he was already aware of a lot of things, just have to make sure to double check on, you know, once you get to this point, you basically just want to order all of the upgrades in how expensive they are, <laughs> you know, and you want to uh, make sure that you don't try to go for an upgrade that's way more expensive than another one that's also right in front of your nose and that's also possible. Uh, and that makes sense because it's not like a misstep and it's not like it ruins your account, but it could definitely hinder your growth at this point because yeah, the upgrades do get expensive. You want to save your money, you want to use it during the events, and you want to up go for the right upgrade first. That'll definitely um, set you up for success and get you to where you want to go faster. Because, I mean, you can always technically upgrade everything, right? You can go for everything, but some things are realistic upgrades and some things are just pipe dreams. So it's good to... I was alive back then. It was great to see you, dude. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that uh, reordered all of the um, questions that some of you might have. And as always, if you're looking for boss parties, join my Discord, Join, the, give yourself the boss roles and just post in there a lot. Looking for party, recruiting people and try to make parties. Right now is a good time to make parties because the slime boss just came out and normal and easy lucid also have extra black beans. Some people are not able to do the Schnabra's bosses but still want to get as many black beans per week as possible to get those droplets and to get those flames from the shop. So try to join people in parties and you can definitely do like 
easy lucid or normal lucid plus slime parties they're like around those three are like kind of around the same difficulty right so it probably goes easy then slime then normal lucid probably around there uh of course depending on your level of skill and your level of familiarity with the boss but try to look for those parties now you can use my chat when i'm live i mean you can also use it when i'm offline but you probably won't find too many people in there just hanging out it's not like an xqc chat or something it's more uh, or a destiny chat <laughs> it's more like uh pretty active when i'm live and when i'm not live it's uh, it's usually just a whole bunch of people spamming my commands <laughs> like in the morning when i wake up it's just like a wall of people using commands but that's okay that's what they're there for so um go for it it's more like a scarter chat yeah um so yeah hopefully it was informational for you and hopefully you guys enjoyed uh listening and if you guys want to win one of these sessions make sure you leave a comment saying that you would like to win if not there's also a link there on how you can request one of these private sessions for you um private well one-on-one -on -one, there's also an option for private sessions if you want to do it off stream if you have issue with it being live um and yeah thank you for watching make sure you check out my video on the patch make sure you go through the sunny sundays very important to have a plan and to be warned good luck on the dmt that's coming up if you haven't registered yet make sure you register at reset and at noon when it comes to reset you know 12 hours after you get new tickets that you can buy for the days that you want to do dmt so make sure that you check the right dmt and go through the process of registering for dmt if you need it if you don't need it like he doesn't really need it that much um you can upgrade like one or two items but Maybe, you know, on his hero, he was going to spend some money. But you don't really need it that much. Um, but some people might need a lot, you know. You just start a new character. A lot of the stuff is epic or unique, and you have some money. You want to get everything legendary. Now is a good time to get that ranked up. So look out for those events coming up. Best of luck. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye, YouTube. Bye, YouTube.